Uh, next one has to do with zoning. Uh, how does the zoning board regulate and monitor building in the county? Who does this and what is the penalty? And then there's a second part that I'll, I'll wait and ask that one. Uh, planning and zoning, is, they're actually established by statute, and each county has its own zoning regulations. Uh, we control, uh, the, the, the zoning administrator, our building permits come through my office that are involved in the county. Uh, all applications for zoning changes come through the uh, planning and zoning board, and the big thing is the enforcement, and the enforcement is that we use our cease and desist orders. I work closely with the state's attorney's office, and we do issue cease and desist orders. In fact, we have a couple of them in place now. Um, some of them will probably end up going to court. But the biggest issue that you have to deal with in planning and zoning is make sure your rules are fair, treat everybody the same, and then when you enforce it, you enforce it fairly on everyone. And don't don't be afraid. You know, they always throw it in your face. I'm going to sue you. We'll see you in court. Don's on everybody's Christmas card list. <laughs> <laughs> okay, the second part has there been man camp set up in the county without the building permit. What is the penalty there? <clears throat> yes, if we find uh, there, there are attempts that have been made for that, we actually uh, do the cease and disorder, a uh, cease and desist order. Get law enforcement involved and have physically removed. Uh, and we, we have we have it fortunately in Montreal County, uh, everybody's been, was aware of our planning and zoning so that they, they did come through the proper step uh, procedure. But our procedures will be changing. There's going to be even more teeth into it. I can't emphasize enough. Now is the time to get your temporary housing ordinance solidified and then make sure that it's Forest. Because one of the biggest problems you'll see is like some of my slideshow, the uh, the small camps where a uh, local producer wants to let you know, 20, 30, 40, 50 campers set up in his field. Um, and there's health regulations that need to be followed, uh, safety regulations. And the smaller camps, you, you, need to, you need to treat them the same. I know when our more important comes off, the rules that we're going to have that are going to be in place are going to be said that we're trying to force out the small operators. No, we're just trying to treat everybody the same. But uh, you can't back away from these companies and believe me, they throw everything at you with their legal vehicles. Okay, very good. Uh, another topic, uh, airports. Uh, needs, needs for airports, you know, those ones depend on how to develop hangers. Uh, any ideas on that? That's a good question because what the city for now has been done before you, you, you realize our airport, if you think about it's on the east side of town, south side of the country. Um, the plans that we see right now have uh, all our developments around the airport. And, uh, and there's been two uh, motel uh, developments that actually had they actually purchased property and realized that they're in the right path there. So yeah, your airport's going to affect where your development's going on. That's the question came from. But if we had to do it over again, we would have our airport moved out. Um, we're bringing in 20 times the jet traffic we ever would have before, and uh, you know, that's going to be hard swing for if you don't have the pressure now. But we're going to wind up with the city built on the airport. Most of the, I think most of probably have to move to the airport. Not know what has got going on. Airport, if, you, if you're doing something, I would say get it as far away as you can possibly manage from your city if you to We haven't had that, but we should move it. I doubt that will happen throughout the development. I will be wrong. I've got more of the this morning than the, the uh, local airport board because there's you know, going to be probably 50, uh, 50 wasted acres around the airport right close to the city that we have to work on. Hangers, we're out of room on our airport. The developers come and say we're going to come in there every day. It's good revenue. It's a good way to support your local airport. They'll build the, the pieces of the park. Nobody's talked about that at any meeting I've been to the now. So, how an active airport board, I tell you. Can I ask a question? Did the oil companies come in and build the hangers in, or how did you 
they they could, but that the varsity doesn't allow that. They have a they have a good book for to install the the book on would love to. But that's one of the challenges is we just do it as a draw on the hand of work. Yeah. And I'm already an expert on that other than I talked with the authority board and I've got three companies say we'll put the hands no problem in the uh airport places planning but everything on is going by all the land is going by the airport authority so they can just run out of the map. Big issue. Meeting, she tells me, 
if I said something wrong or not, so I'm probably going to have to write something in the paper and retract anything I said. And we farm. I can move my drill faster down my field than I can on 76th Avenue, which goes by my place into the main hall. That road is nothing but rocks. It looks well, probably worse than the pictures Don had. But you cannot go fast. Farm equipment does not handle rough roads. You have to go slow. I can go faster down my field. The other part of it is harvest last year. I shouldn't say probably the year before, because last was it last year again. Year before. Last year was just a credit harvest. Anyway, she sat in the field while we're combining on a rural township road and wait. And of course, you know if you're pulling out a field, those of you that farm, it isn't like the, the on ramp on the interstate, right? It's a road, it's got a straight steep up, and it's about this wide, and you've got to go slow so your truck don't tip. My wife sat there and waited for 14 oil field semis to go by before she could pull out of the field. Let alone when you're driving down the road on a rural township road, there isn't really room for two trucks unless you're going three miles an hour. So like I said, enjoy your serenity that you have and realize that your farming will be a lot slower, so hopefully you'll make a lot of money from oil. Okay, thanks. Uh, next one, uh, there was just a comment on man camps, uh, which is already covered, and just another uh, comment, I guess, don't pass any laws you're not willing to live by yourself. Instead of no cell phones, a lot of distracted driving for everyone for big farms. So, that's just a good suggestion. Um, next one would be, uh, please address the cooperation between your city governments and your county governments. In other words, how key is that cooperation? I'm going to just use one word. It's huge. From a county perspective, working with the cities, you can't get anything to go without working together very closely. Uh, I work with the offices in Montreal County, and we try to do everything together so that we, we, uh, so we all, we're all on the same page and understand what's happening. Uh, I just can't emphasize enough the cooperation between the cities and county. Absolutely. I think it might be more difficult in some communities. McKinsey County has you know, basically two organized cities there. But you know, if you're if you're in the county, if you're in the city, you're a member of the county. That's what I always say. It's, it's all about that relationship. So you can't do without if you can't get that figured out, you sure can't go to the state or the feds and ask them to figure it out. That's that's what I say. Next is um, on property taxes. What type of property taxes do the temporary housing developers pay and what value are they based on? Let's give it to Don gets out. Property taxes on land accounts are taxed at the land being zoned commercial. The buildings on top of the land are not taxed because that's they're taxed when they're purchased as trailer money. So the state in the last session passed what's called a two camp ordinance, which allows for taxing at the land camps. And Montreal County is uh, will be enacting an a ordinance that will be a one thousand dollar a year base uh, cost for a land camp, and for every bed above ten beds, it's a hundred dollars a year per bed. So. What we're going to, what Montreal County is proposing to do with those funds is 40% of those funds that are raised will go to the fire district that serves the Man Camp area. 40% of the funds raised will go to the ambulance service which serves which serve the Man Camp area. And 20% will go to the county to help cover some of the costs for the roads, uh, law enforcement, uh, things such as that. But that's something you need to be aware of because you have to act upon that separately as a county commission to, uh, to be able to cover that. Done. Is that a tax or a fee? Hence it's, measure number two. Actually, it's in the gray area. It's considered a fee, but if, if uh, measure two passes, they're not so sure that this might not be included as being banned by measure two. Isn't there also an example? 
Yes. Yeah. That's the problem. Yeah, the legislature, in their wisdom, <clears throat> exempted out mobile homes and uh, RVs. Well, you saw some of my pictures. Well, this man camps for RVs. Now, according to our state's attorney, what we'll be going to be doing in Montreal County is we're going to be enacting impact. Uh, and the impact fee will go on against RVs and mobile homes that are being used for temporary housing. So that's kind of the way that we're addressing it because you can't imagine um, the impact this has on your emergency services. Beyond the these people, I just feel sorry for them. Our, uh, the Stanley Ambulance, uh, I think its record is six runs in a day. Uh, the Newtown Ambulance Service, I believe, was nine runs a day. Uh, and that goes pretty much nonstop. And then the other issue that comes with that, oil companies do really well in care to pay their people, but a lot of these people are subcontractors and they're supposed to be carrying their own insurance, and they don't. So the evidence is kept on the bill. Even though those people are making good money, they're subcontractors and they're, they're out. What is your impact here for our base members? Uh, the $1,000 base and uh, $100 per bed in the RVs, or in the campus. So if you've got two beds in there, that's going to be good enough. And that's, the other thing about these impact fees, they're due up front. And uh, we'll do a two-year conditional use permit as part of our changes. And both years' fees are due and payable up front. And I believe we can only do that. We can't do it because our time is plan isn't in there. So there's an example of not having a time use plan. We can't implement that with as long as we can. So we will be doing that. Which we think will be paid for 
to the sale of uh, product water to the low industry, and they're happy to do that. So uh, it's not, it's a project I'm really involved in, and it's been controversial for some different reasons, but we think we're doing about 20 years of water projects out there in three years. So, so again, I, you know, I, I'm not, I'm saying that we did go to the legislature, that our, our people fought hard to get this done. Uh, water, for us, around Scott Way, is everything. And so uh, we're asking the industry to help us pay for it. Uh, and, you know, that's what I would recommend. If, if you think you're going to be restricted, your restricts will come from water and sewer. That's where they come from. And if you, right now, McKinsey County is actually zoned by water. And people are buying. They're paying 30, 40 down an acre by 20 acres of time in front of the water district. And we've got a two inch line coming to them and saying, it's not going to happen. Well, it's all drilled up. You're not going to let them go to Fox Hills for a water anymore. And so, uh, we have a little better case probably to get this done. And I, I'll be more proud of that than anything I've done in, in our community if we get the water to that dry area. So, I'm glad we're not that good. I've got to get on this one for now. We're paying that back, too, though. That's not just one comment on that. You, as a city, if you're going to sell water to oil companies, be careful. There was a city in western North Dakota that oversold their water. They've been penalized by the uh, State Water Commission. They have lost the ability to sell water, and they have also received monetary fines. And I believe it's going to be two years before they can start selling water again. That's how much they oversold their, uh, their water program from the State Water Commission. Okay, with that, uh, okay, Clint. Thank you, real quick. Um, Doug, could you maybe talk a little bit about the reclamation process of, of the water that's, uh, that's been used for the tracking and coming back? Uh, what we need to do to put in place for, like, I, I think you talked about the training bridge process for the uh, water. People just dump it down the field and whatnot. <laughs> We really have to get going on lunch here, but I'll, I'll give somebody a minute on uh, that was reclamation of the sites, right? One, one minute only, please. One of the issues that you brought up is we have uh, these production water trucks, like the one I showed you tipped over. Uh, they, they pick up production water at a well site, they take it to a salt water that's supposed to be well paid, I don't know, 35 cents, 85 cents a drive, put a ton down. But they figure if they open up their spigots and drive down the road by the time they get to the salt water disposal well, it's all on key, it's all in your county roads. Cost us ten thousand dollars in the last one that uh, the county was responsible for because some uh school driver drained his into the road ditches and drove down the road. Okay, with that let's uh, give our presenters a round of applause.